guys, thanks for joining me today for story time. Today is all about creativity and using your noodle or your noggin. So we've got a super fun book named Willow by Denise Brennan Nelson and we've got some fun crafts to do with noodles today. Uh, before that we'll go over what all comes in your grab bag this week. So you will have your very own bookmark that says dream that you can color and create design how you want then you have a create your own puzzle so as you can see the little puzzle pieces you can draw whatever picture you want on there and then have someone help you cut out the pieces and you can make your own puzzle and for our letter of the week this week we have the letter b B, 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 as in butterfly. So that is what we are going to be making today is a butterfly. And we will go ahead and do that. So you will get a letter B, like that, and I've colored mine blue. And then you will also have a little sheet that looks like this, that has eyes on it, and this little rectangle piece. So you can color those whatever color you want. I colored mine pink and I have my eyes I just left them white and you will have your parent help you cut those out and then take tape or glue and you're gonna take your rectangle piece and line it up right here on the edge of your B and then I'm going to tape that down because I lost my glue So it's gonna look like that. And then you're gonna take your eyes and put them right up here. So I'll tape those down real quick and show you what it looks like. All right, and there is our butterfly for the letter B. Be sure to hang on to these because at the end of our alphabet, we're gonna make our own letter book. So there is our letter B. All right, so we will go ahead and get started with our story. As I said, it's Willow by Denise Brennan Nelson. Even on the sunniest days, Miss Hawthorne's art room was cold and dark. Everything was in its place. There wasn't a single broken crayon in the bunch. The students sat in their rows, silent and still, like eggs in a carton, except for Willow. Rosy-cheeked Willow twisted around in her seat to look out the window. Face forward, young lady, Miss Hawthorne's icy blue eyes glared at Willow. Willow shivered. Miss Hawthorne's moods were as dark as her clothing. She doesn't sound very friendly, does she? One day in September, Miss Hawthorne handed out paper, paintbrushes, and paints. She told her students to make pictures of a tree and hung an example on the board. All the students painted trees with straight brown trunks and round green tops everyone except Willow. Whoever heard of a pink tree? Miss Hawthorne asked with a frown. That's what I saw when I closed my eyes, said Willow. A few students giggled. Sam snorted. Pink stinks. The next week, Willow carried her well-loved art book to school. In it was a picture of a flamingo, pink tree, painted by a famous artist. Look, Willow pointed, giving Miss Hawthorne her most magical smile. Miss Hawthorne glanced at the picture, then turned away with a scowl. Horrid little girl, she muttered as Willow skipped off. She is not friendly at all. In October, Miss Hawthorne passed out paper, paintbrushes, and paints. 
She told her students to make pictures of an apple tree and hung, hung an example on the board. All the students painted trees with straight brown trunks, round green tops, and red apples. Everyone except Willow. Miss Hawthorne pointed a long bony finger. Look at the mess you've made. And there is no such thing as a blue apple. But that's what I saw when I closed my eyes, said Willow. Some of the students giggled. Sam laughed especially hard. Yeah, who ever heard of a blue apple? You all ever seen a blue apple before? The next week, Willow carried her well-loved art book to school. She showed Miss Hawthorne a picture of a tree with blue apples. Then she reached into her backpack and took out a blue apple. This is for you, she said, handing it to Miss Hawthorne. Miss Hawthorne's face turned red. Horrid little girl, she muttered as Willow skipped off. Autumn flew past. Willow always seemed to be in trouble in Miss Hawthorne's class. Stop daydreaming, Willow. You broke another crayon, Willow. Willow, put that book away. Most of all, Willow got into trouble for not painting things the way Miss Hawthorne wanted her to. The day before winter vacation began, students brought presents for their teachers. No one brought a present for Miss Hawthorne, except for Willow. Miss Hawthorne stood at the window watching Willow and the other students board their buses. She wasn't in any hurry to leave. No one was waiting for her at home. Miss Hawthorne walked to her desk. She was surprised to see a gift. No one ever gave her gifts. To Miss Hawthorne, my art teacher, from Willow. Miss Hawthorne slowly unwrapped the package. Nestled in a bed of tissue paper was Willow's well-loved art book. Miss Hawthorne sat holding the book for a long time. It was dark outside when she walked to the cabinet where the art supplies were kept locked away. Miss Hawthorne filled her arms with paintbrushes, paints, colored pencils, and a sketch pad and carried them to her desk. She flipped open the sketch pad and stared down at the blank page. Finally, Miss Hawthorne picked up a colored pencil. For the first time in her life, Miss Hawthorne doodled. Outside, the wind howled. Trees creaked and strained and broke where they could not bend. Snowflakes swirled upwards. The lights flickered off. Miss Hawthorne sat in the darkness. When the lights came back on, Miss Hawthorne's fingers found the wet paint and spread it across the page. The school custodian poked his head into the classroom. He stopped, astonished at what he saw. She's finger painting, isn't she? Across town, Willow stood at her bedroom window, peering at the soft, fat snowflakes through her spyglass. After a while, she climbed into bed and fell asleep, wondering if Miss Hawthorne liked her present. When the students returned to school in January, everything was the same as always, except the art room. With wide eyes and open mouths, the students stood rooted in the doorway. Willow was the first to step inside. What do you think they saw? Behind a graceful willow tree covered in paint from head to toe, a woman was painting. Look at the art room now. Do you know where Miss Hawthorne is? Willow asked. When the woman turned around, the students gasped. Miss Hawthorne? asked Willow. Oh, I'm so glad you're here, Willow, Miss Hawthorne said. She looks completely different now, doesn't she? Grab the paintbrushes. I need your help. 
Delighted, the students did as they were asked. This time, everyone painted just the way they wanted. Especially Willow. The end. See, so it's not always a bad thing to be creative and paint blue apples. It's a good thing. So moving on to our crafts for today, we are sticking with the theme noodle. And our first one, we are going to take regular macaroni noodles and paint them. And then we're going to make necklaces out of them. So I just have, I found some unicorn shaped macaroni. So I'm going to be painting those. I've got some pink, blue, and green paint here. I've got me a piece of cardboard. brushes and my macaroni noodles straight from the box I'm gonna dump some out and I've got some stars and some rainbows and some unicorns so I'm just gonna take my brush and Spread these out a little bit, dip it right into my pink paint, and I am just going to dab that on there. And this will get messy, so make sure you have an adult help you. And it turned out like that. Okay. So I'm going to paint the rest of these and I will be back with you all in a minute. All right guys, so I've got some of my macaroni painted. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I'm gonna let that dry. And after it dries, I'm going to take some string or yarn and just stick it right through the holes in my macaroni and I'm gonna make a necklace out of it. Another thing that you can do with your macaroni after if you have different shapes, you can dip it in paint and take a piece of paper and use it as a stamp, which is really fun to do. Just make sure you don't make a mess because I'm sure mom and dad won't be happy about it. Okay, so while that's drying, we are going to move on to our second noodle craft, which is a pull noodle monster. So we are going to take a piece of a pool noodle and we are going to take some googly eyes and pipe cleaners and make a monster out of it. So you do get a piece of a pool noodle and a little baggie with pipe cleaners and googly eyes in your grab bag this week. Okay so and just be creative when you're doing this so I'm just going to take my eyes and just stick them on wherever. Mine is gonna have three eyes. And then I cut me out a little nose just with some construction paper. And I'm just using tape to make this stick. So that's what my monster looks like so far. Uh, let's give it some hair. Now it has some hair and you can make it curly and bend it whichever way you want and then you want to give it a mustache let's use our sparkly one for the mustache There we 
you go. How's it looking? It's good, right? All right, how about some arms? So I'm just gonna take two of the pipe cleaners and twist them together to make them longer. And then I'm going to tape them in the back. Just like that. And there you have a cute little monster. So that is it this for this week, guys. As always, be sure to comment below with any little monsters you make or any of your necklaces, any crafts that we do. Be sure to just send them in because we would love to see them. And I will see you all next week.